When a young woman decides to get married, the joy and happiness of her new life-to-be is usually expressed through a diamond ring on her left hand. The stone in it can be big, it can be small, because whatever its size to an engaged couple, a diamond is the symbol of love. But it wasn't always so. Until just 500 years ago, most girls couldn't hope to own a diamond. Wearing diamonds then was the prerogative of royalty. In fact, diamonds were worn primarily by men. Mary of Burgundy was one of the first women to wear diamonds. She was important because she received the first diamond engagement ring. Hers was not a typical marriage of the time. It was a love story. She defied the King of France who wanted her to marry his son and chose instead Archduke Maximilian of Austria. The son of the Holy Roman Emperor, he was heir to vast holdings in what is now Germany, Austria, Northern Italy. But he would have been a prize catch even without them. He was a gallant knight, a great hunter, inventor and master of seven languages. He wanted to give Mary a unique and beautiful betrothal gift. So when she said yes on August 17th, 1477, he slipped a diamond ring on the third finger of her left hand. Because from the Middle Ages, they believed that there was a vein in that finger that led straight to the heart. Diamonds were first discovered in India more than 2,000 years ago. One of the most fabulous of the Indian stones was the Kohinoor, now set in the British crown. Eastern rulers believed that whoever owned it would rule the world. It's been owned by a Raja, Mughal Emperor, Persian Shah, and finally Queen Victoria. The famous Hope Diamond, stolen from a statue of a Hindu goddess. It was brought to Europe from India in 1668. Most of its owners since then have been curiously unlucky. They include Marie Antoinette, who lost her head, Lord Francis Hope, who died penniless, a Folly Berger star slain by a jealous lover, a Turkish sultan overthrown in a revolution. In 1958, this great steel blue diamond was donated to the Smithsonian, and it rests here peacefully on display, where it gives nothing but pleasure to millions of visitors every year. These fabulous diamond earrings once belonged to Marie Antoinette. Napoleon gave his second wife, Marie Louise, this tiara, set with 950 diamonds and emeralds which have since been replaced by the turquoises you see here. He was so happy about the birth of a long-awaited heir that he showered her with presents. This diamond necklace set with 172 diamonds was another gift of his appreciation. There are 1,535 diamonds in this nuptial crown made for a 19th century Russian empress. It was worn later at imperial weddings, including the marriage of Nicholas and Alexandra. Diamonds, a miracle of nature. Created deep in the searing hot interior of the earth, they are found only because they were driven upward closer to the surface in volcanic-like eruptions. While nature forms the diamond, human skill transforms it into a gem of great beauty through cutting. And then each diamond is evaluated by four standards. One is for color. Most diamonds have a glimmer of color. The exceptions are deeply colored stones, like this golden diamond, which are very rare and can be found in any color of the rainbow. Clarity refers to the absence of flaws. Although most diamonds do contain tiny invisible specks which rarely affect their beauty. Another evaluation of a diamond is its cut. This is the brilliant cut. It has 58 facets, perfectly proportioned so the gem appears to be filled with light. This is known as the diamond's fire. Here are some other popular diamond shapes. The marquise the pear, the emerald cut, and the oval. And finally, there's carat weight, the measurement of a diamond size. A carat is equal to one-fifth of a gram, and each carat is further divided into 100 points. Color, clarity, cut, and carat weight. 
These are the four C's which determine the value of any diamond. Now let's see how a diamond becomes a ring. It begins as a designer sketch. Out of 100 sketches, probably only one will be taken to this next step, a finished rendering. Next comes this model in wax. It's the first time the idea is seen in three dimension. Then a rubber mold is made. It is needed to make this metal casting. Other rings are hand engraved in metal. All these steps have to be done by hand, by skilled artists and craftsmen. It takes time and work and thought to come this far, but it's only the beginning. Now let's watch some technicians and craftsmen at work. Their skill and dedication turn nature's most precious gifts into fine jewelry. Each diamond has a mystery of its own. The critical eye of the gemologist inspects every stone and selects only those that meet rigid standards for color, cut and clarity. Space age accuracy, the weighing of a diamond. A diamond magnified 10 times becomes a shower of light. Skilled hands give birth to a ring and baptize it with flame. Preparing the ring to receive the diamond is entrusted only to the sure hands of the diamond setter one of the most skilled of all jewelry craftsmen. Deftly, the diamond is lifted into its setting with beeswax and carefully secured. These diamonds are being set into an eternity ring, a gift from men to their wives as a reaffirmation of their love. The true mark of quality has been the same for centuries, painstaking hand workmanship. Today's artisans excel in the ancient traditions of hand engraving and chasing, skills still handed down from father to son as they were in years past. Finally, a marriage that will last forever. The warm luster of precious metal, the icy fire of a diamond, art in perfect harmony with nature and the romance of a diamond becomes a reality for another couple in love. Ever since Mary of Burgundy, the most important diamond in a girl's life has been the one that goes on the third finger of her left hand. The way Maximilian probably offered the ring was in a knightly gesture on one knee. Today, most couples prefer to choose their diamonds together. Part of the fun of choosing your ring is trying on lots of styles. This is a solitaire, the traditional engagement diamond. You can have it in a wide variety of settings, contemporary, classic, antique, with side diamonds, or sculptured shown here with a matching wedding ring. Whatever its setting, a diamond is one of the few fashions you can buy that will never go out of style and may even grow more valuable as years go by because diamonds, like a great love, seem impervious to the laws of time. <laughs>